Rabbi Akiva was giving a shiur, he was giving a class, and as he looks around, Rabbi Akiva sees some of the eyes start to close, and some of the talmidim start to doze, and Rabbi Akiva wants to wake everybody up. So what does Rabbi Akiva say? Rabotai, Esther Hamalka, Queen Esther, ruled over 127 Medinot because Sarah Imenu lived for 127 years. And then Rabbi Akiva looks around the room and he sees the eyes start to widen. And his Talmidim, his students, start to sit straight. And everybody starts to have a hit root. They start to wake up and there's energy. What was Rabbi Akiva saying? Why did everybody wake up? Because Rabbi Akiva was saying that every single person makes a difference. Every moment, every second, every hour, every day. Because Sari Imain was able to take every single day of her life, cool and shove in Litova. She made every single second count. Sari Imainu brought her light into her ohel from one week to the next, her bracha from her chala from one week to the next. And because Sari Imainu made a difference in her life, this became her Yerusha, this became her inheritance, so that Esther Hamalka was then able to say, thank you, Mama Sarah, thank you, Sari Menu. Your life became a gift for me. Who knows, who knows every second, every hour, every day, what you can do that makes a difference in the life of the next generation of Am Yisrael? Who knows if right here, right now, what is the zuchut? What is the privilege of all of us coming together? Davening, praying, tefillah, learning, connecting to Hashem in this incredible Chodesh Adar. But I ask you something, my friends. Rabbi Akiva, his students were tzaddikim. They were the holiest of the holies. Are you going to tell me that the Talmidim, the students of Rabbi Akiva, their eyes would start to close. Even in this room right now, I'm looking, everybody's awake, Baruch Hashem. How could his students be closing their eyes? You see, the Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva lived in a time of churban, destruction. And when there is churban, when there is destruction, when there is sadness, when there is depression, and you feel that Hashem is so far away, and you need a Yeshua so badly, it becomes easy to close your eyes. It becomes easy to lose the spark inside your neshama. It becomes easy to sit and shear and say, why, 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 lama, lama, lama. What can I do, Hashem, to make the curtain that is covering your presence in my life come back? To pull away that curtain of Hester Panim so that I can connect to you, Hashem. Chodesh Adar is all about reconnecting, finding Simcha. Misha Nichnas Adar. Do you know what Adar is, my friends? Adar, Ani Dar. I live with you. Hashem is saying, I want so badly to be with you. I want so badly to be in your home. Create for me a mikdash me'at ve'asuli mikdash v'shachanti b'tocham. I want to come back to you. Bring me back into your life, into your heart, into your home. But how do we do it? Purim is coming. Purim is connected to Yom HaKippurim because both days are so holy. The koach of the tefillah is incredible. So how do you and I make a change? How do you and I make a difference? How do we create a Yerusha, an inheritance, not just for us, for our children, for our children's children, to bring the Geula, to bring the Yeshua? What can we do? Listen carefully. Esther Hamalka, Queen Esther, 
She gave us the Migilat Esther. What is Migilat Esther? Migilah, to reveal Esther, the hidden Esther Amalka. She's whispering to us. She's speaking to us. Look inside the Migilah. I'm going to give you the secret, Esther says. You want to get rid of the Hester Panim. You want to connect again to Hashem. Follow me. Come into the Megillah and see what Esther Hamalka, Queen Esther, has taught us and given to us. So when Esther Hamalka was taken, Vatilakach Esther, El Beit HaMelech, she was so frightened. What did she say? Kaylee, Kaylee, Lama Zavtani, Hashem, Hashem, why did you leave me? But what was one of the first things that Esther Hamalka did? And here we have the first message of the night. Listen carefully. The et sheva hanearot haruyot lateitla. What did Esther Hamalka ask for? Seven young attendants, women. Why seven? So that every single day, Esther Hamalka could count for Shabbat. Five more days, four more days, three more days till Shabbos. Why? Likrat Shabbat lechu v'nelcha. Let's go, let's greet the Shabbos. Why? Ki hi mikar ha-bracha, because Shabbos is the mikar, it is the foundation, it is the source of all bracha in our lives. We need during the week to count like Esther Hamalka did for Shabbat. Every time you see something beautiful, you see flowers, delicious recipe, delicious cake, a wonderful Devar Torah. What do we say? Lekavod Shabbos Kodesh. Count every single day. If you meet somebody who doesn't have Shabbos in their life, say, come into my home this Shabbos. Show Hashem that we count the days for Shabbos. Ki osi, because Shabbos is the sign between us and Hashem. It's the ring on our finger that we belong to Hashem. Am sigula. Do we count for Shabbos every day? There's a woman that I teach. She has a little boy, 10 years old. She called me up just this past week and she said that her little boy, Mordechai is his name. Mordechai ben Ya'el, he should have a refuah shalema. Every single day, this little boy cannot speak, not one word, not one syllable. The only way that he can speak to his mommy is on a laptop. He points to pictures, and he gets very excited every day. And she says to him, what, mommy, what do you want? What, Nishama? And this little boy who cannot say one word, he goes to the laptop and first he points to the numbers. And she says, five? And then he points to the pictures. And then he finds the picture of the Shabbat candles. And he points and she says, five more days till Shabbat? And he holds five hands. That's all he says, not with a word, with his neshama, with his soul, with his heart. And where does he have this koach, this gift, this energy from? Esther Hamalka. Every single day, Esther Hamalka counted for Shabbos. Of course, she knew when Shabbos was coming. But to know that the bracha is coming to greet Shabbos, to greet Shabbos with Simcha, to say Hayom Yom Rishon le Shabbat, Hayom Yom Sheni le Shabbat. And when Shabbos finally comes, not to run and say, oh my gosh, five more minutes at Shabbos, oh, but to come and to say, Shabbos, Shabbos. When my children were little, I would take my children to my parents' house for Shabbos. Lel Shabbos Friday night. All of the cousins would gather in their pajamas after the meal. 
my father would say the Shema with them. And then they would say, Bubba, they would say to my mother, Bubba, can you tell us a story from when you were a little girl? And so my mother, Rabbitzin Esther Youngrais, Aleha Hashalom, Zechusa Yagain Aleinu, would sit down with all the children, all the grandchildren, and she would say, What story would you like, Kindelach? What story would you like, children? And they would say, Bubba, can you tell us about when you were a little girl and Shabbos in Bergen-Belsen? And then my mother would sit down with them and she would say, when I was a little girl, I was taken to Bergen-Belsen with my Tati, with my Abba, with my Mommy, with Mama, and with my brothers. Every day, my tati would get an old little piece of bread. My tati wouldn't eat the bread. Instead, he would take that crusty, moldy little piece and he would hide it in his pocket. Every day, he would say to us, Kinderlach, lichte Kinderlach, my precious lights. Five more days till Shabbos. Four more days till Shabbos, hold on. Three more days till Shabbos, hold on. And finally, Shabbos would come. My tati, my mother would say, would take me and my brothers and mama, my grandmother, my mother's mother, and he would take us and he would say, Close your eyes, Kinderlach. Close your eyes and imagine that you're home. Mama had gebacked challah. Mama just baked the challah. Can you smell it? The candles are dancing on the Shabbos table. My tati would take out those crusty pieces of little bread that he was given and saving, and he would give it to each of us. And he would say, Shalom Aleichem. Let's say Shalom Aleichem to the Malachim. And my Zayda, my mother's father, would sing then, Shalom Aleichem. One Lel Shabbos, one Friday night, my uncle, my mother's brother, a little boy at the time, he said, Tati, I don't see any Malachim here. There are no angels here. Tati, you're singing Shalom Aleichem, but where are the Malachim? Where are the angels? Here there's no angels. And then my mother described how her Tati, her father, my Zaidi, began to cry. And he looked at his little boy and said, Ah, but you, lichte kind, you, my precious light, you are the angels. You are the angels of Shabbos. Every woman sitting in this room is a malach of Shabbos, an angel of Shabbos. We bring the light of Shabbos into our homes. And every single day, Esther Hamalka taught us, mikor habracha, Bring the source of bracha into your life, into your heart, into your neshama, into your home. Let's count every single day. How many days left till Shabbos? And when Shabbos does come, greet Shabbos with simcha. If there's somebody around that you know who doesn't have Shabbos, invite them into your home because just one Shabbos and we can bring the geula. It's up to us. That's the first message from the Megillah. The second message from Megillah's Esther. When Esther Hamalka says, I will reveal to you the truth, is the koach of tefillah, the power of our tefillah. U Mordechai yada et kala sher nasen. Mordechai knew everything that had been done. By Yikra Mordechai et begadav. And Mordechai tore his clothing. By Yalbeish sak and he put on sackcloth and ashes. 
he went into the city and he cried a loud and bitter cry and when Am Yisrael when the people of our nation saw him they said Mordechai what happened and Mordechai said we have no king we have no Navi we have no prophet to tell us what to do we have no place to hide and we have no place to run we are like a ship without a captain. We are like sheep without a shepherd. We have nothing, but the only thing that we have is the koach of our tefillah, the koach of our mouths. Use your lips and pierce Shemayim. And do you know what was happening then in Shemayim? The Medrash describes the Malachim, the angels themselves, were crying. Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet, went to Moshe Rabbeinu, he went to the Avot. You have to help our children. What did they do? They went to the feast, the Mishteh. There's nothing we can do. There were tears in Shemayim. And then Mordechai said, we have to gather and we have to daven. And the koach of tefillah is so incredible and awesome and powerful that it was able to override all of those gizeirot. So what we must know is that we are coming now to the most incredible day, Purim, Yom Kippurim. Let's plug in to the energy, to the koach of the day. Let's take the tehillim of Esther Hamalka, Perik Chaf Beit, when we go home from here tonight, every single day, say Perik Chaf Beit. Turn off your phones, close the door. Nobody should disturb. Think of one person that you know who needs a Yeshua. Together, let's pierce Shemayim so that everyone who needs a Yeshua, they should have the Yeshua. Everybody who needs a Refua Shalem, a Davin for them, take their name. Ask Hashem to send the Refua Shalema Bimheira quickly. Whoever needs Shalom Bayis, think of that person and ask that Hashem sends Shalom Bayis and opens hearts between husband and wife, between parents and children. Davin, whoever needs Parnassah, show Hashem that we are thinking of each other. Keli, Keli, Lama Zavtani, Esther Hamalka said. But Esther Hamalka also said, Laminatseach al Ayelet Hashachar. Do you know what Ayelet Hashachar is, my dear friends? It is the darkest part of the night, right before the sun comes up. That is the darkest part of the night when you think that things are so black and so choshech and there never will be light again. And it's at that moment that we have tefillah and we see the little points of the sun coming up. That is the Yeshua. Every tefillah counts. We have the koach of tefillah and nashim tzidkaniyot, an incredible and awesome koach. And this is the Chodesh for us to use it. Just as Am Yisrael did in Shushan. You and I, we can do this. We can do this. Every tefillah counts. The third message from Esther Hamalka, and it's so beautiful, is the koach that we have of achdut. Unity to come together to stop judging and start loving when Haman came to Ahasuerus, he said, Yesh no am echad mefuzar meforad ben ha'amin. There is this one nation, Yesh no, from the Lashon of Yeshenim. They are sleeping. Do you know why they are sleeping, this nation of Am Yisrael? Because they are mefuzar meforad, they are split. There are divisions. This one can't talk to this one, and this one can't sit with this one, and this one looks at her, and this one looks at him, and they are so split. 
and so divided, and there is no achdot. Yeshnam, yeshenim, they are sleeping because they don't realize what does our Abba in Shemayim want? What does Hashem want? Just that we love each other, just that we be good to each other. How is it that you have a chatuna, a wedding, a bar mitzvah, a bat mitzvah, and you say, oh, this one can't sit with this one. This one doesn't talk with this one. This one, don't put her with her mother-in-law. This one, the neighbor, uh-uh, they had a thing. They had a thing, they had a thing. You know that if you are a parent and you take your children on a trip and you're in the car, what is the most aggravating feeling? When from the back seat you hear, she's looking at me, I have no room, he's sitting on me, his finger's touching my spot. Kindle of children, what does your Ab and Ima want? Love each other, make room for each other, get along, stop judging each other. It's agmat nefesh, it's aggravation for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to see that we are mifuzar, that we are split, that we are divided, that one can talk to the other. For what? For what? For this we lose our shalom. For what? So what does Esther Hamalka say to Mordechai? Esther Hamalka says something so beautiful. Lech kino said, kol hayehudim, go Mordechai, gather everybody, but make sure kinos that they should be a Knesset, they should have unity, they should be an aguda, they should be together. Not that this one makes a tefillah there and this one makes a tefillah there. Look how beautiful in this room. Look at the koach of this achdod. How beautiful. This is what Hashem wants from us. I teach a little girl for her bat mitzvah. She's 12. And she said to me, do you know what I'd like to do? I decided that every day, lunchtime in school, when I come to the table where everybody is sitting, I'm going to look around, and if there's one girl with sad eyes, or one girl who looks like she's having a bad day, I'm going to put my lunch tray right next to her. Is that so beautiful? Can we not do that too? If you see somebody with sad eyes, it doesn't have to be a stranger. Sometimes the people that we live with, we don't look. They can have such sad eyes, and we make believe we don't see. Do you know what the greatest gift you can give to somebody is? A smile. Give a smile, my Zaidi would always say. Give a smile. Kost nicht kein Geld. It doesn't even cost you anything. What a gift to just sit down next to somebody, to be sensitive to open your heart to the pain of another. If we want Hashem to be one with us, then surely we must be one with each other. Esther Hamalka is speaking to us today. She's whispering to us, my Zisa Kindelach, my sweet children, what would it take, what would it take to Put away the hester upon him to push away that curtain. What would it take? Be good to each other. Use your koach of tefillah. Plug into the light of Shabbos. Count each day for Shabbos. And finally, my dear friends, I want to leave you with this thought. Haman comes from the nation of Amalek. What is the koach of Amalek? The gematria of Amalek is the same as safek. What does it mean, safek? Doubt. Asher karcha baderech. The nation of Amalek. Asher karcha. They happen to come upon you baderech. What does that mean? 
Asher Karcha, as if they just came upon you, random, so fake, to have a doubt in your mind that there are things in life that do not come from Hakadosh Baruch Hu, derech on your derech on your path of life, to think for a minute that in a time of Hester Panim when things are hard or challenging or difficult or choshech or black, to give up to have a safek, to think for a minute, I can't do this, I can't. Instead of saying, Lama, why? We say, Lima, for what purpose am I going through this challenge, Hashem? Because I know this is coming from you. Help me, Hashem. Madua, why? Means Madea, what am I going to learn from this experience? What is the greatness in my neshama that is going to come from this moment? Just as Esther Hamalka taught us. So I had the most beautiful parents with the most incredible neshamas. Every day when I say modem, I think of what I have to be grateful for. And one thing that I thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for is for giving me parents and grandparents who gave me a derech in my life of emuna, despite the fact that they went through fire and Bergen-Belsen and Auschwitz and lost so much, they never lost their emuna, and they were able to give that to us, their children. My father was called Abba Zeda, which means Abba Father and Zeda by all of the grandchildren, because his whole life was just for the children. And every time that I had a baby, Baruch Hashem, my father would come over and he would say, you go to sleep, I will take care of the baby. <laughs> and we would call the babies shoulder babies because they'd all go on my Abba's shoulder and they would just be at peace. One day, my Abba became very sick. And we just had nine weeks to say goodbye. It was one of the last weeks of my father's life that it was just me and my father, my Abba, in Sloan Kettering together. The windows, the shelves, were filled with my Abba's Sfarim, with his holy books. I was sitting next to my father's bedside. And my Abba said to me, Slava Chanala, Shefala. He always called me Shefala, which means dear. Bring me a Chumash and open up to Parshat Vayechi. And I did. And then my father said to me, Shefala, read to me now the Pesukim where Yaakov Avinu says goodbye to Yosef. And I said to my father, Abba, I, I can't. And my father said, Abba asks. So I started to read the Pasuk, where Yaakov Avinu gives the bracha to Yosef. And he knew, the Pasuk says, that the days are coming close for him to leave this world. And then my Abba turned to me and he said, Shefala, my dear, I know that soon I'm going to be leaving you. Maybe it's in a day, maybe it's in a week, but it's soon. What can I possibly give you? What would my Yerusha to you be? I want to give you my bracha, the bracha of Yaakov Avinu. Hamalach Hagoel Osi Mikal Ra Yivorich Et Hanearim. You see, Shefala, there was a time where I lost everything. My mother, my father, my brothers, my sisters. I didn't know what tomorrow would bring. But Hashem is so good. And even in those difficult times, I came here to this country and I was an orphan and I was all alone. But Hashem sent me your Ima. Hashem sent me Mama and Zayda, your grandparents. 
and we started a life all over again. And we had kindlech, and we had children, and we had nachat. I am giving you the bracha. And wherever you go in life, you share the bracha. Gam ki elech be'et lo irara. Even in gate some of it, lo irara, never be afraid, ki ata imadi, because Hashem is with me. And that was the bracha that my father gave to me. And that is the bracha that I want to share with you. Never allow the safek of a malek to take hold, because Hashem is always with us, both in the morning and in the night. If we can remember all that, my dear, dear friends, we have the koach here to say, la Yehudim haita or of a simcha, sasen v'yakar, kein t'yelanu, so may it be for us. Hashem should bench you, and may we all bring the gu'ula together. Thank you so much. Thank you.